here we are, mate. We're into episode number five. Can you believe it, Maddie? We're rocking and rolling, pushing these episodes, helping agents out in the marketplace. Great feedback, Klaus. Yeah, we have. Really good. Yeah. Really excited social, to help people. Yeah, and we really appreciate your feedback on our social media platforms. But, Maddie, this could not all be possible without the man with the glasses and that beautiful, <laughs> hunky, funky, punky hat he's got. <laughs> our mate Clinton from sprinkler.media which is uh, you might want to go and check his website out because he does some amazing videos and he works with a lot of agents in the industry, but also now, hey, the podcast Lads, you know, space. You know you can tell someone's really good when you don't even know they're there. <laughs> <laughs> you had to remind me I was being videoed here. <laughs> so true, so true. All right, Maddie, let's get into the next call. We've got Udwin from Wynn Real Estate let's do it. in Melbourne, Victoria. Do you know much about Mulgrave? I don't know it too well, yeah. um, but... We'll hear some more about it, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So this is going to be uh, interesting with our friend Udwin from Wynn Real Estate in Mulgrave, Victoria. Hello, Claudia. Udwin, hello, my friend. Listen, welcome to The Mentors. You've got Matt LaHood and myself, mate. Uh, Hi, Liz- Matt. Hey, Udwin, how are you? Good, good. How What's the you? weather doing today in Melbourne? <laughs> It's a bit, it's a bit unpredictable. No, uh, it's a bit muggy <laughs> at the moment. What's there? I oh, love it. No, and and, and, and tell me, uh, Udwin, um, mate, we're we're on the mentors here. We're going to ask for your pressing question. Before we go there, tell us a little bit about your marketplace and a little bit about how many transactions you do a year. Um, and yeah, we understand you're from Mulgrave. What's the average sale price in Mulgrave there at the moment? Yeah, so at the moment, median price is about a hundred thousand. Um, so the units are about seven fifty. Normal houses about nine hundred thousand dollars. So you probably need about eight fifty to nine hundred to be able to get into the suburb. And would when uh, you are pre- oh, sorry, predominantly auction or for sale market. So eighty percent we sell to the auction. Yep. And I am the principal. Yes. Oh, fantastic! Awesome, awesome. And tell me, um, tell us how long you've been in business for. Would when how long have you had Win Real Estate going for? Yeah. So we actually celebrating our third. Yeah, and it's very next month. So Fantastic. we've been in business for about three years. Congratulations, mate. Three years. That's awesome. Well done. Yeah, you've, you've achieved thanks. heaps. You've achieved heaps. Okay, Udwin, it's time. Bring us your pressing question, my friend. What is it? All right. So my um, question is about pricing at the listing presentation. Um, sorry, we just missed that, we, uh, Udwin. So sorry, what did you say about the listing presentation? Say again, please. Repeat so, that. So, yeah. So my question is about pricing, pricing of the pricing. property at the listing presentation. Yep. Yeah, right. Yeah, so as, as, as we all know, the market is uh, changing a little bit at the moment in Sydney and Melbourne. Um, so some of the vendors are still expecting higher price than what the uh, property is really worth. Yep. Uh, so usually I attack the pricing with saying by giving them a few comparables uh, in the area. Yep. And I give the authority back to them and asking them, what do you think, where, where do you see your property sits uh, at based on these three comparables that I've shown you? Yep, beautiful, beautiful, okay. And does that, tend now, to, does that style tend to work for you? Um, lately, it hasn't worked. Right, okay. Uh, usually, lately, the pressure is coming back to me. Yes. Um, after we had a discussion about uh, the comparables, they often come back to me and ask me the question, so do you think you can get a million for my property? Right. So my question is that. How right. do you respond to that without upsetting them? Because I feel in the last few uh, listing presentations, I upset a few people and I was, uh, I was, I was behind. I was on the, on the back wheel again trying to, Build the pot again after I give them the wrong price. In terms of price, yeah, Maddie, it, mate, we've got to say this. Yeah, there's so a lot of agents right at this moment going into yeah. listing presentations. Um, it's always a challenge, but one thing in my 30 years of real estate, I don't think I've met an owner that's ever been under the market on their expectations. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's the industry we're in. So what you have to become really good at is an expert at delivering news, right? So. Um, it's interesting when you say you lost rapport. You, the rapport shouldn't be being built around the price. Um, it should be being built around your reputation and your trust. 
So you should never, because there's going to be hard conversations you're going to have to have all the way through the campaign, things that you're not going to like to tell the owner. But my um, honest approach to it's been, I've been very, very transparent for 30 years. I've told the owners everything good, bad and ugly. Um, I've even gone to the point of saying to an owner, look, if they said to me, for argument's sake, if, if I thought it was worth eight fifty, and they were saying, could I get a million? I said, if a million dollars is out there, I'll be the best person to find it for you. Mm, mm. Um, yeah. But my view is that it sits around, if you, if you put a gun at my head today and said, I'm pulling the trigger, I think I can get you eight fifty to nine. Um, and it's based on evidence. I said, I don't want to give you something I can't do. If you said, get me a million dollars, pull the trigger, um, I, I, you'd have to pull the trigger. I'm not going to say I can get you a million dollars. So I think you have to be really good at how you deliver it. So I, you, I, you can't lose rapport on – you shouldn't be losing rapport on price. The conversation shouldn't be built on that, right? Mm -hmm. So the best way I would think – and I, I never have a problem with price. It doesn't matter what market I'm in going up because what I always do when – sounds like you're on the track. I wasn't sure if you're doing this specifically, but I always pick a home that's not as good as theirs, one that's much better yeah. and one that's about exactly comparable. I then put those three printed documents with pictures, um, floor plans, uh, or every bit of information I can get, date they exchange, time. And I don't go back any further than six months, right? Yeah. And I usually find something that's on the market now in addition to that information and I find out what they're quoting on it and then I, I bring that for evidence too. So I sit down with them and I say, here are the three properties on the market. This, one is, um, a sm this one's a smaller block of land than yours and it has uh, one garage, you've got two. Your, this house here is very similar in land size to yours, has similar features, bedrooms, has the same parking. And this one's a bigger block than yours and has three gar garage and a pool, which yours doesn't have. And then anyone that's half sort of reasonable will say, okay, right, we get it. They will know, they already know the price, Woodwin, before you get there. Just assume they already know the price. Most people today have access to the same data we'd have access to. They can do a core logic report. They can also do a, um, they can get, you can type prices in Mulgrave and in, in Google cool. and it'll come up with an average price. You don't need the agent anymore. So assuming they already know the price before you get there, then you don't want to be the biggest liar gets the job. I'd rather not get the job and give it someone else. If you can't get a million, let it sit there and you pick it up at 850 six months later. You know? Is it expired listing exactly? Mm. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah yep. no, definitely. And the other thing I'd do is I'd, I'd get the three comparable properties that are on the market right now to theirs, get the quotes off the agent, send an email and get the quotes back on email, like off realestate.com, mm. email address, whatever. Take that to them mm. as well and say, look, here's the three properties. You see how I'm going to the nth degree to actually show them the evidence? I think it's no good anymore just turning up and half-winging it. You've got to be like an expert at pricing. Absolutely. And, and, and I think what, oh. what it also is going to come down to, Woodwin, is, is really focus on, you know, talking to them about the process of how we're going to get to a million dollars. Obviously, what Matt sort of said before, he said, look, we're going to be there and if there's a million dollars out there, we'll go out there and get it for you. But he's not going to promise it to them. But what more, more importantly is understand how price work but also you know we've all heard this right before like understand how buyer behavior is in the marketplace we all know that you know if you use an analogy I, th I find analogies people can relate to so if you were saying to someone look let's price it at this level what's going to happen is you know let's say for example when you had a, a, a wedding to go to this weekend and you needed a new suit you needed to go to David Jones to buy this new suit first thing you do is you see a suit that you really like on the rack you pick it up off the rack Apart from looking at the size that's going to fit you, the, th the second thing you're going to see is look for the price. And let's just say that you had a budget of $500, but this suit really caught your eye because it had a beautiful pinstripe, for example, and it was a little bit more than what you were hoping to pay. Let's say it was $699. What happens yeah. is eventually you go to the change room because you really want to try it on, see how it fits and looks. You walk out of the change room and you go, wow, this fits and looks amazing. 
but it's a little bit more than you want to pay. You go from that logical to the emotional, and that's where all the buying is done, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor. 100%. So what we need to do is get the people through your home. The more people we get through your home, the more conversations that I can talk to them about your home, and then they'll fall emotionally connected with the back pool. They'll fall emotionally connected with the kids' rumpus room. They'll fall emotionally connected, the wife with the kitchen. So this is where, you know, you've got to sort of, paint the story and actually use an analogy for them where they can make a connection to what you're trying to achieve. Do you understand? Because a lot of it, if not, yeah. then they just get stuck on price, Woodwin. So use the oh. use analogy of you're going to buy a suit this weekend or, you know, if you had a wedding to go to, you know, to the Mrs. Oh. Vendor, you know, you were thinking about a dress that you wanted to buy and you had a budget. How many times have we all been there and you've probably been there where you will just actually pay something more once you've put it on or you've tried it on, even though it's a little bit but above your budget. That's the same behaviour that we're going to see when people are going to come through your home, Mr and Mrs um, Vendor. So at the end of the day, you know what it is, Udwin? It's really honing in on your explaining to them the process versus the other agent will go in there and saying, yeah, we'll get you a million dollars, right? If you spend some time using analogies, uses some storytelling – and really being able to demonstrate like what Matt said, the facts, the hard facts and evidence of where it sits and focus more in on the process and understand, have them understand buyer behaviour, they're going to find the connection right there as to what your message and communication you're trying to get across. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the analogy, I think the story, that was uh, something that I probably uh, was lacking on. Yep. And what Matt said about, um, put down the three uh, recent sales, the one that is similar, the one that is higher, the one that is lower, but yep. also with how much the agent, the other agent quoted them for. Yep. And I think that's that's important, yeah. Ab- ab- absolutely, so, absolutely. And Udman, yeah. I would say the best thing you can do, I'm 30 years in the real estate aid industry, I'm still getting referrals. How long, every Matt? How long have you been? Years. Oh, my God. <laughs> Same as you, man. How old are you? No, just kidding. 46. <laughs> There you oh, go, I started 47. when I was 16. <laughs> there you go. Um, so the reality is, um, Udwin, I've never honestly, on, on this, I've never told a vendor something I didn't actually believe. I've priced things wrong because I've got them wrong, but I've never actually gone and thought, you know what, this is a million, I'm going to tell them 1.2. I'd rather, I've actually said to them, yeah, look, if you want 1.2 million, I would suggest not put it on the market. This is my dialogue to vendors. If um, if you want 1.2, I think it's worth nine to a million. What I think you should do, mm. hold on to it. I'll call you when the market hits a million too, and then let's go and put it on the market then. Mm. I like that dialogue. I'll mm. call you when it hits a million, 1.2 yeah, million. Yeah, now that might be – then they look at it and they go, well, how long could that be? I said, well, that's your answer. I'm not sure. But what I don't want you to do is damage the property, trying it on 1.2 – and then we come back and won. And then once it's recorded on the market, that'll, make, that'll take us another year to try and get that price because once it's recorded today, it's damaged. Yeah. And what about some dialogue like this, Matty? Even say to them, my job is also here to protect you yeah. and protect price on your home. And the yeah. worst thing you can do is go with an agent that's going to promise you 1.2 when it's only perhaps maybe worth somewhere between 900 yeah. and a million and then tarnish the property and then second time round going in, you're not going to get the level that you exactly. need. Exactly. Exactly right, yeah. Claire. you, you just got to be authentic and be prepared to lose the business. I don't mind losing business. Yeah. It's actually a good lesson. Not all business is good business, Udwin. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 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 Does that has that answered your has that answered your question today, or do we not on the mentors? Yeah, just just one more thing. And oh usually, no, no, you only had one question. Uh, no, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> you can throw it out there, buddy. You go for it. What is it? Um, no, I understand all that. Um, sometimes vendor keep asking you the same questions over and over again, uh, but in a different way. Um, so do you? You, you know what I mean, right? So do you give the same answer again and again in the same in, in a different way? Uh, can you give well? me an example? Give Matt, right. give Matt an example. Give Matt an example. So the first question was, um, do you think you can get me one million, right? Now the second question probably, I'm not going to sell if it if it if you don't get a million. Okay. Well, or, they, the... or, 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 or they could say the other agent promised me a million, so. Yeah, so they, they could ask that in a different Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, so I would say to them, like, first of all, if you don't believe it's worth a million, you just say, could I have a look at the comparables the other agent gave you? That's mm-hmm. the first thing I'd do, mm-hmm. right? 
then if, it, if they're not using the agent for leverage they're using themselves, I want a million, you ask them, can I ask you how you arrived at a million? Mm. Mate, they're very okay. interesting questions to ask because 99% of the time when I ask them, they, I don't get the answer. And yeah. they go, oh, we just want a million. I said, well, it doesn't work like that because what if the buyer comes in and only just wants to pay 800 Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. And what you want and what it's worth are two different things. So I think sometimes actually what Matt is saying here, Woodwin, is putting it back on them is not such a bad thing. So how did you, you know, we, we won't sell if we don't get a million. Okay, how did you arrive at a million dollars? And let them And then if justify, they say, we don't, we're just- not going to sell or we don't a million, we'll say, that's what I would do. It's your right to hold on the property. I would hang on to it a million. When it gets to a million, I'll call you. It's at eight fifty now. I reckon it could be there in about two years. So what's your plans? You're happy to hang on for then? And they just go that way with it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Or, or if you wanted to, if you wanted to, Odwin, I mean, what are your suggestions, Matt? Like sometimes, you know, you might say, well, look, why don't we just put our feet in the water? Why don't we just get test the market for the next two weeks? Bring, get some feedback, quality feedback from five buyers that I'm working with yep. that, are, that, that are looking to buy between 800 and 1.2 million. Let's show them your home over the next week. Let's get, let's get a reading on it and then we can make a decision as to where the property should sit. What are your thoughts on that, yeah. Matt? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, that, like that. that's, just, that's just, a good approach as well. That way it's not causing too much collateral damage in the market. C- correct. Like going to auction or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, and get, and get the market to give you some feedback and just say, look, what, why don't we get things rolling? Why don't we? I bring some buys, you know, 800 to say 1.2 million over the next week or so. Then we can get some really good feedback and from that feedback we'll get some readings and we can decide if the home is worth a million or not. Woodwin, the best thing I think you could do, which may help you a lot, is if you get some of your owners who totally trust you that you've had great success for and video them, get them, mm. ask them the right questions. Like say when you came in, you know, you were hoping for this and, you know, um, Mr and Mrs Jones, we got this for you and this was the process. And, so, and they get to say, look, Woodwin was very honest. He was the only one... Um, <clears throat> It was the only one that uh, said, you know, like that um, he would get this price, et cetera, et cetera. Other agents came in, they promised us more and then Edwin delivered. You get them to ask those, they sort all those yeah. issues out, you know? Mm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, okay, my friend Edwin. Mate, we have had great pleasure speaking to you this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Mentors. And if you have any other further questions, drop us a line on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, The Mentors. My friend, thank you for being on episode number five. Thanks, Mentor. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Edwin. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.